Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to my weekly update. As you can see, I'm back on the farm. It's brilliant to finally get a Friday where I am actually at, at home. It's been a, a very, very full on time. Um, many of you will be aware that it was, of course, Lord Henry Plum's memorial service in London this week. He was the most remarkable man. He was an enormous help to me and I know very much so to my predecessors as well. So it was wonderful and a great honour to give the tribute to him at St Margaret's Church in Westminster this week. There was a huge turnout, I would say probably nearly 600 people uh, in church. So a, a great tribute to, to him. Um, I've said many a time he was one of the, the greatest advocates that farming has, has ever known. And indeed, I think that the greatest ever president of the NFU. And we've always had to mark his time as president of the NFU, uh, a Henry Plum lecture, which indeed he was at uh, this time last year himself. And this year, uh, on the same day as the memorial, it was very timely, really, that Baroness Mallingham Buller, Eliza Mallingham Buller, gave uh, the lecture. And of course, she was uh, head of MI5 back in the sort of time, about 2007, 2008, for about five years. Uh, of course, the rise then of Al-Qaeda, 9-11, events that sort of changed the world, really. And she reminded everybody of how she actually went to David Cameron, who was prime minister at the time, said, we need to double the budget if we are going to keep this country safe. Um, just shows quite how high the risks were and, and how different our lives are on the on the back of her time, actually, at MI5. But she was making the point and the comparisons on, on food security that it really needed to sit at the heart of government, the risks of not taking food security seriously. The fact that the world faces huge migration challenges now uh, as we face the ever greater challenge of dealing with the, the double conflict, if you like, of global warming and global feeding, which I believe very, very strongly that farmers are the solution to climate smart agriculture being a big part of that. Um, and in, in other news, and I know you'll all be desperate to know, some of you, I hope many of you, will have received your BPS payment uh, today, and if not today, we'll receive it uh, in December and hopefully soon. But real pressing uh, angst, I think, from everybody uh, about wanting to know what the future of the ELM scheme is going to look like. Um, we've got a live event with Janet Hughes that David Exwood uh, will be leading on on the 15th of December. I'd encourage you all uh, to get involved. I hope that there'll be some answers by then. But, you know, you know very well where we are on this. We want a scheme that really works for every farmer and grower in England. Um, I believe it's absolutely within the art of the possible, but it's unacceptable to have this delay. It really is. You know, we've had it postponed and postponed. I'm now told that there might be an announcement before Christmas but indeed it might wait till afterwards. And of course, the same with uh, the seasonal workers scheme. It is unacceptable. And I have made that point, as indeed have my rest of my office holder team, very, very strongly to government. Um, briefly, I also had a meeting with Kemi Badnock, Secretary of State at the Department of International Trade this week, um, and, and really wanted to get a readout from her on where they are on CCTPP, also on India, very concerning with the Indian trade deal about sugar. We've liberalised with Australia. We do want government to take a very defensive line with sugar. It's heavily subsidised in India. And we will already have too much sugar with cane and the beet that is produced here coming onto our marketplace. We really need to take that issue very carefully as we move forwards. So as ever, please do take care wherever you are. And I really look forward to catching up with you again next week. Many thanks.